The Patel Developmental Inventory, second edition, is a comprehensive developmental assessment of five domains, adaptive, personal, social, communication, motor, and cognitive. We focus on two of the five areas in our video, adaptive and motor skills. The age range is between birth and seven years, 11 months, and again, in our video, we used a two-year-old child. It is a standardized assessment, and it takes about an hour to an hour and a half, depending on the age and developmental level of a child. These are the included materials for the Patel Developmental Inventory. Each of the five domains can be assessed independently and individually. The five domains can be tested in any order. This assessment is often administered as an interdisciplinary team, where different disciplines assess the domains typical to their practice area. For example, speech would assess the communication domain and OTPT would assess the various physical domains. The scoring is based on a 0-1-2 point system. Zero points are awarded if the patient did not attempt the task the exam required. One point is given if the task is attempted or partially completed, and two points are awarded if the task is completed fully and the milestone is reached. Chronological age must be determined for the screener to completely score the patient. In order to determine the basal, a score of two on three consecutive lowest number items administered or the first item in the subdomain if a basal cannot be established. In order to determine the ceiling, a score of zero on three consecutive highest numbered items administered or the last item in the subdomain if a ceiling cannot be established. First, we're going to just put on the shirt. When done in an interview setting, ask the parent or caregiver these questions. Does your child help dress himself or herself? If so, describe how the child helps. How often does the child help in this way? Apple. When done in an interview style, ask the parent or caregiver these questions. Does your child request food or liquid? If so, describe how she or he does this. How often does the child do this? When done in an interview style, ask the parent or caregiver these questions. Does your child use a spoon or other utensil to obtain food? If so, describe how he or she does this. For what portion of a meal does the child use the utensil to feed himself or herself? How often does the child use a utensil to feed himself or herself? For an observation style, observe the child to determine whether he or she moves independently around the house requiring only occasional washing or supervision. Because we were not able to observe in a clinical setting, we conducted an interview. Does your child move around the house by herself or does an adult or older child need to carry or move the child? She moves around pretty independently. Sometimes I might have to help her, but usually independent. Okay, how much supervision does the child require as she moves around the house? Like I said, she's pretty independent. Look at these two pictures. This picture shows food cooking on a hot stove. The other one shows a match that is burning. Is it right to touch the hot pan or the burning match? No. Why not? It'll hurt me. If the child says that someone told him or her not to touch these things, say, why doesn't that person want you to touch them? Probe to determine if the child understands that hot items are dangerous. Interview. Ask the parent or caregiver these questions. Does your child understand the danger of hot items? If so, explain how you know that the child is aware that hot items are dangerous. Give examples of what the child does when he or she is around hot items, such as candles, stoves, grills, or fireplaces. How consistent is the child's response to hot items? It's time to clean up. Can we put the toys away? Okay. In an interview setting, ask the parent or caregiver these questions. Is your child expected to clean up his or her, her toys after playtime? If so, how frequently does the child begin to pick up his or her toys after being asked to do so? How well does the child comply when asked? How much prompting do you typically need to give before the child completes the task? Okay, 
Okay, so we're gonna play a game, red light, green light. And when I say green light, you're gonna get on the trampoline, bounce up and down until I say red light, and then you're gonna jump back off. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Green light. Red light. Green light. Red light. Great job. You can do this in a structured clinical setting or you can complete this by observation at home. In interview style, ask the parent or caregiver these questions. Does the child maintain balance when he or she is bending, walking over uneven surfaces, such as playpen, or reaching for something? If so, describe examples of situations where the child has corrected his or her balance, rather than stumbled or fallen over. How smooth and coordinated are the child's actions? How typical is this response? We're gonna try walking up the stairs. Can you walk up? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna start over again, and then try stay to stand. Try and stay standing. Okay, we're gonna try one more time. Good job. You can do this in a structured clinical setting or by interview. In the interview, ask the parent or caregiver these questions: Does your child go up the stairs? If so, how does he or she climb stairs? For example, creep, walk, crawl, or scoop. What support does he or she need to climb stairs? How many steps can the child climb? For video purposes, we use three stairs instead of four. Okay, now can you walk down the steps? It can be done in a structured clinical setting or by interview. In the interview, ask the parent or caregiver these questions. Does your child go down the stairs? If so, how does he or she go down the stairs? For example, crawl, scoot, walk, or creep. What support does he or she need to descend the stairs? How many steps can the child go down? Can I see the toy? Give me the toy. Thank you. This can be done in a structured setting in a clinic or an observation in the home. Observe the child while he or she is playing with the toys in the presence of adults or other children to determine whether he or she extends a toy to someone and releases it. In interview style, ask the parent or caregiver these questions. Does your child extend toys to people? If so, does he or she release the toy after offering it? Describe how the child makes such an exchange. Can you throw it back? This can be done in a structured clinical setting or by interview. Ask the parent or caregiver these questions. Does your child intentionally throw balls, toys, or other objects? If so, does the child move his or her arm forward and release the object from his or her grasp, or does he or she continue to hold the object? When throwing a ball or toy, how often does the child release the object so it moves away from the body? Watch me. Now you do it. Take them out. This can be done only in a structured setting. This can be done only in a structured setting. This can be done only in a structured setting. The Battelle Developmental Inventory Examiner's Manual gives the therapist charts on age equivalent, subdomain, skilled scores, percentile rank, and developmental quotient. When looking at the age equivalent chart, you can see what age the subdomain score is typical for, whereas in the subdomain skilled scores, you can compare performance to that of children of the same age. When looking at the percentile rank, you can see how many children scored below, above, or at the level of the child in the standardization. The developmental quotient is a norm-based standard score based on the subdomain scaled scores added up. Internal reliability is whether people give consistent scores on every item of an assessment. The BDI-2 total score shows a very strong internal consistency of 0.99.
When looking at two-year-olds, the BDI-2 total score for test-retest reliability, or consistent scores every time the test is taken, is very strong at 0.93. The examiner's manual states that most of the BDI-2 is scored using the objective parameters provided. Therefore, not much is left for the examiner to interpret, resulting in inter-score reliability not being too relevant here. The examiner's manual also provides convergent validity scores comparing the BDI-2 to many other developmental scales. I list here the convergent validity between the Bailey Scales of Infant Development, or BSID, Mental Index and Motor Domains, and the De Denver Developmental Screening Test 2, or DDST2, Personal Social, Fine Motor, Gross Motor, and Language Domains. Strong positive correlation is seen between the BSID Mental Index and BDI-2 Cognitive and Communication Domains. Very strong positive correlation is seen between the DDST2 and BDI2 Personal Social, Fine Motor, Gross Motor, and Language Communication Domains. Some biases of the BDI2 include some cultures viewing functions differently, such as the child not being expected to walk up the stairs. Another bias that needs to be taken under consideration is when it is being administered to children who do not use English as their first language. The BDI-2 has accommodations for each test item for children with disabilities.